let's talk about inspecting our cases. Let me go ahead and apologize up front. I'm going to be moving some stuff around today, which I believe is going to really confuse my camera's autofocus and light settings. So bear with me and bear with the camera as we work through this. I suggest you inspect all of your cases before you size them as you begin to reload them. Uh, now before you inspect them, I suggest you clean them. Cleaning your cases is going to make them easier to inspect. Cases can get very dirty. Um, they can get dirty from pride, uh, primer and powder residue. Uh, for instance, let's look at these 244 specials. This one looked just like this before it was shot. It's been shot one time. That's just residue uh, from being shot. If there were a crack in this case, it would be harder to see if it weren't clean. Cases may get dirty from oil or lubricant in the firearm. They will certainly get dirty when they hit the ground and, and get covered in dirt. They may be stained or darkened with age, especially if they're exposed to the elements. A stain in and of itself won't hurt the brass, but uh, many of us reloaders like to take uh, pride in ownership, if you will. Any dirt or grime that is left on the cases can conceal any damage or defects. And also, if there's any dirt or grime left on your cases, when you go to size them in your sizing die, it can damage your sizing die. There's a, a little carbide ring in there, in this die, and any dirt or grime could scratch that. And then, from then on, that die's going to leave scratches on all the brass I, I put through it. Also, any dirt or grime could damage your firearm if you chamber it. Um, so clean your cases. I prefer to wet tumble. Choose whatever method uh, you prefer, but uh, clean them before you inspect them. Now when you inspect your cases, it's a great time to sort your calibers. Uh, for instance, it would be very easy to throw these two in the same mix. This is a 243. This is a 308. The 243 parent cartridge is the 308. Their main difference is the size of the neck, but it, it would be easy at a glance to put these into the same box. Also, this is a 30 out 6. These two use the same size projectile. Um, so, inspecting your, your cases, your brass, before you uh, size them is a great time to sort out by caliber. Uh, some people like to sort out by head stamp. It's a great time to do that. Uh, to put particular uh, manufacturers, uh, uh, certain head stamps together. Um, it's a good time to sort through your boxer versus your bird end primers if that's an issue for you. If you shoot 45 auto, um, it's a good time to sort out the small primer versus the large primer. The primary focus as you inspect your brass should be the mouth, the neck, and the, and the shoulder. Not the only focus, but the primary. You're going to want to look for any dents, bends, creases, bulges. For instance, here's some 38 Special. Obviously that's not quite round, that's bent. There's no real crease in that. Um, my guess is that's going to size just fine and will be okay to reload, but it's things like this you're going to want to look for. Um, sort out, make sure you keep an eye on it. The bend on this one, let's see if we can focus on this. There's a bend there that almost turns into a crease. Let's see if this will focus. So as you size that, you're going to have to make sure that that doesn't leave a crease in the brass. Again, little dense, not quite round. things to watch out for, for, for any damage that will cause that case to fail when you actually load it and then fire. You don't want to look for any cracks or splits or holes or corrosion. Got a couple examples here of what you're going to want to look for. This is, this is a 243 and hopefully you can see this crack right here in the neck. That is split. That's a split split neck. You can, uh, you can see the white coming through there there's no way to recover this case. This 357 Magnum case, 
pretty good split there. Obviously, you're not going to want to reload that. What may not be as obvious, though, is... In addition to that crack, uh, that split, there's another one up here in the case mouth. Get yourself a bright light. It'll help you inspect. Oftentimes in these straight wall uh, handgun cases, the split's going to be up here in the mouth and it's going to be real small. And corrosion, uh, look at these four tins. Something spilled on the box they were sitting in. This is not something you're going to want to put in your firearm. This is what it should look like. Don't chance it. Don't put that in your firearm. You'll see the same type of corrosion at times on, on empty brass. Put it through your tumbler. Clean it up. If any of that is left on there, give it a good inspection. Uh, but, but be wary of that. Also, on your, especially on your rifle brass, um, watch for signs of impending case head separation. Back here, on most rifle cases, you'll see a little ring where the, the web ends. But if you start to see a little ring further up, and this case does not show that. I don't have a, a good example of one. But look for a bright ring in here that's starting to show that it, the case head may start to separate. And the reason I have this paper clip with a little bend in it is you can reach inside these cases and if the case head is starting to separate you can actually usually feel the indentation in there. And won't go into all the reasons that that happens but basically the brass thins and if you you fire a case that's too far gone you may extract this portion of the brass it'll sever here and, and this portion may be left in your firearm. So as you inspect your cases, really, you're trying to identify anything that's not normal. Some defects in the brass can be worked out, can be worked around, can be reshaped. Uh, many cannot. And the, the rule of thumb that I use is, if in doubt, throw it out. Now, I would suggest if you're going to save the brass to take to the scrapyard, get a pair of pliers and squeeze it in the middle so there's no way that that brass can work its way back into circulation if you will but yeah if, if in doubt throw it out there's no need to risk your firearm worth several hundred dollars let alone your own personal safety for a piece of brass that can be replaced for a few cents so inspect your brass before you size it identify anything that's not normal get rid of anything that can't be uh, fixed or reused and enjoy the reloading process. Thanks for watching. Come back soon.